Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the latest and greatest improvements to CMU Emulator in its version releases from the last 2 to 3 weeks. The versions we're going to be taking a look at are CMU version 122.10 and also CMU 122.11. This 122.11 version is currently only available to CMU's patrons at time of making this video, but as per usual, it will be released to everyone absolutely for free on Friday the 23rd of April, exactly 7 days after its Patreon release. As per usual, in these types of videos, we're going to go down through the changelog list and take a look at exactly what has changed in these two new versions. We're going to be covering some general changes, some graphics pack changes, some changes to Coronet, changes to the debugger within CMU, lots of changes to input and logging. So let's kick things off as per usual and take a look at CMU's general changes. First up, they have made Vulkan the default rendering API. This means that by default when you download CMU Emulator, it is no longer going to default to OpenGL, meaning that its users are going to have a much, much more enjoyable time, especially with the introduction of asynchronous shader compilation, a method of shader usage that allows gameplay to proceed even when shaders aren't fully compiled. The downside of this method of asynchronous shader compilation is mainly that you can get graphical pop-in the very first time you play a game, however, its advantages, at least in my opinion, far outweigh its disadvantages. I personally prefer a few moments of graphical pop-in versus constant intermittent shader stutter throughout the first few hours of gameplay. They have also added a brand new option in the per game settings, the game profile settings specifically, which now allows you to set whether you're going to use Vulkan or OpenGL for whichever game you're going to be playing. This is going to be really useful since Vulkan is the default renderer now, but if there are specific games that you wish to play on OpenGL due to performance, graphical or rendering issues, you can now set it individually on a per game basis. This is just a very nice quality of life change for us the users. Staying on quality of life changes, they have also made it so that games installed via the file menu are now going to automatically appear within the games list. Previously, it was necessary to manually refresh the games list to get these games to appear. This was just a little bit confusing for some people when installing files in this way. Thankfully, this issue is now completely solved. Yet another annoying issue that has now been fixed is the meta.xml is missing error that could occur when trying to install games, updates or DLCs. This issue was a huge pain in the ass. Thankfully, it's now completely fixed. In the latest CMU versions, they have also added a new warning message when launching CMU through Steam. This is mainly to inform the user that Steam's shader pre-caching is known to cause graphical issues in games, especially when in combination with CMU's asynchronous Vulkan shader compiler. Hopefully this error message will now reduce the amount of issues being reported when users are loading their games through the Steam user interface. The final of these general changes is a fix for a crash that could occur when swapping from a regular view to the separated gamepad window either using the button toggle or by pressing a tab on your keyboard. If you encountered this issue when playing games like Wind Waker HD or Hyrule Warriors, please download the latest CMU builds to make sure that it's fixed. Moving swiftly along, let's take a look at some OpenGL and Vulkan changes. First up, we have a change and a fix for OpenGL. This helps to avoid a crash that could occur when clearing depth textures. This solves a crash that could occur in Smash 4 when using the OpenGL renderer. Moving on to our Vulkan changes, they have not only, as I said earlier, made Vulkan the default API for CMU, but they have also significantly reduced the number of Vulkan image views created by roughly 50%. This greatly helps to prevent crashes on GPU drivers that have a low image view limit. Moving on to some core init and NN boss changes, by correctly handling HTTP errors when downloading spotfast files, they have fixed a crash when trying to play the 100 Mario challenge in Super Mario Maker. They have also tweaked the behavior of MP wait task to prevent it from starving other threads of all of the CPU time. This fixes many random soft locks that can occur in Yoshi's Woolly World. 
They've also added some new command line options to overwrite web service URLs. For information on these new command line options, I'm going to link them down in this video's description, as well as the default URL links, which these automatically and at the moment link to within CMU. Our final two categories for changes are input and the debugger within the emulator. Let's kick things off by taking a look at input. They have improved stick axis handling when the resetting state is slightly off-center. This resolves an issue where analog sticks could sometimes not reach the edge of the default range multiplier. They have also completely fixed an issue where direct input pads would not correctly detect all buttons. This personally was happening for me on my DualShock 4 and DualShock 5 pad in their default direct input state. And finally, they now show more sensible button names for a disconnected direct input controllers. They now display the actual names of the button lists instead of random numbers being displayed in your input window. Our final three changes with these new CMU versions are in relation to CMU's debugger. They fixed incorrect encoding of CR registers with non-zero indexes in compare instructions. Graphics packs code caves now show up in the modules list and finally, they added condition registers to the register view within CMU's debugger. And there we have it guys, all of the latest and greatest changes to CMU in its last two versions, 122.10 and 122.11. As I stated at the beginning of this video, the latest version, 22.11, is only currently available for CMU's patrons. If you already are one, Head over to your email address or CMU's Patreon page, you will find a link for downloading and installing it right there. Alternatively, if you are not a CMU Patreon, simply wait till the coming Friday, April 23rd, and this version is going to be available for you absolutely for free. If any of you have been following me over on my Discord server or over on my Twitter, you may know that I have recently upgraded CPUs to an Intel i7-11700K. That is a CPU that I really want to check out the performance levels of on this and pretty much any emulator I want to cover. So CMU, Yuzu, Ryujinx, RPCS3 and Xenia. And as always, if there are any games that you would like to see me benchmark on this new CPU versus my old 10700K, obviously I'm going to be checking out stuff like Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Link's Awakening and so on, but if there are any games that are not obvious, I guess, that you would like me to test out, please do let me know down below this video in a comment and I will test that out for you absolutely no problem. It may take a few days for me to do these benchmarks since I'm currently running this 11700K on my Z490 board, but the performance is kind of a little weird compared to what I've seen on this CPU, so I'm waiting on my new Z590 motherboard to do any proper testing. Maybe it would be interesting if I made a video of what the performance is like on the 11700K on a Z490 versus a Z590 motherboard. If that's something that also may interest you, please do let me know down below in the comment section also. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video guys. Once again, I greatly, greatly appreciate your viewership. Without you guys watching my videos, I literally would not be making them. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see all future videos from me.